Oh, hi. Welcome back. Um, this is another little exercise for us. This exercise is about the spelling and grammar checking. Um, and I've clicked on the home tab. A um, couple of things. First of all, it's possible, as, you, as I'm sure you know, to correct spelling just by right-clicking on a, a word with a, a wavy red line under it and clicking on the one of the options offered in the drop-down menu. So that's that's the probably the easiest way of doing things um, for individual words. But if you want to do a little bit more detail, you want to check things a little more carefully, then I suggest you you go to the review bar and use the spelling and grammar check in there. A word of warning here: if you're going to check a document, make sure that the carrot, this little uh, marker where you type, is right at the beginning of the uh, the document. Um, it doesn't have to be. If I, if it were to be somewhere else, then it would simply start the spelling checker at that point, um, but it would allow you to go back around to the beginning when it comes to the end of the document. But just to make it nicer, I'm going to start at the beginning. Okay, so we're now looking at the uh, review tab and spelling and grammar icon in the proofing tools. So let me go. Okay, now um, I guess many of you know this. Um, what we've got here is the spelling and grammar dialog box, and you can see what it's done. It's it's pulled up the first uh, errant word called uh, uh, process, spelt wrongly. A couple of things I can do here. I can ignore it. I can ignore every occurrence of it in this document. I can add it to the dictionary, so it will never check that spelling again. It will just assume it's right. Um, the lower part of the <coughs> dialog box, excuse me, <coughs> you've got uh, the things you can do. You can uh, change the word, and of course, if it here you've got a list of possible words, and uh, whichever one is highlighted, that will be the one that you change. And uh, the process is what we want here. I can change it uh, for this occurrence. I can change it for every occurrence in this document, or I can add it to the autocorrect. Uh, uh, table, in which case every time it finds that word, it will automatically correct it to, in this case, process. Uh, be careful with that because um, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, over on the left here, we've got a little bu button that's ticked that says grammar check. If I untick that, it'll only do the spelling. It won't look at the grammar. So let's put that back. Um, <coughs> there are a variety of options we'll perhaps look at later, but uh, for now, let's just go through the process of, of checking this. So the first thing we're going to do is, we know process is right, so we can change that. It jumps then to the next errant word electronically, and again, this is a pretty straightforward uh, replacement. Whilst um, this has been chosen, uh, and sometimes actually you won't it won't pick this up, it'll look at wilts. Um, but on this occasion, it has done it correctly, and that's probably because I rehearsed this earlier, and it's uh, it's sort of trying to guess what's going to happen. So yeah, let's change whilst. T-H-E is the. Now, that would be something that's a very common mistake, and you'd want to um, autocorrect it. So I'm going to go down to the autocorrect button and click on that. So instead of uh, just changing it, which is an obvious thing to do since the is highlighted there, uh, I'm going to set it so that whenever that's typed, it will auto-correct it. So if I click on that, now what I get now is, uh, it's rather confusing, it says an auto entry, an auto-correct entry for HTE already exists. Do you want to redefine it? Well, I'm going to say no to that. But it is strange that it hasn't autocorrected something that uh, that it should have done. Okay, the next one here, we've got the word the up in the text here. You can see the, the, it's repeated itself. And uh, this is now allowing me to remove it. This is quite uh, a useful thing. But at this point, I could start to edit the text in here. And any text that I edit will be uh, 
will be changed permanently. So in this case, I'm just going to delete the, the, the one of the birds. Okay. Similarly, and, that, and that's happened again, and B is repeated, so I'll just delete that. Um, and again, we got a little bit of text here. It says, uh, let me transform it into proportionally space. So it's proportionally, not promotionally, proportionally. So we'll change that. Magazines. Now, um, no issue here except that if you're not very confident with the use of hyphenation, you might want to look twice at uh, a correction like that. But it's okay in this thing, just the plural magazines. Okay, so let's change that. Uh, efficient, efficient, I don't know what that is. Correcting, corrected. Necessary, it's fine. Sign oh, significant, yeah. Variety, yeah. Now, here's an interesting one. What it's trying to correct is together, which is normally one word. But here we've got a space between them. And you can see Word hasn't been able to identify that. It's not down here. So this is something that you think, wow, what's happening out here? You would have to go in and edit yourself. So I'm going to go in there and get rid of the space together. A little bit of a pain. If you make a mistake there, you can have to do the edit. But uh, yeah, it's a pity Word didn't pick that up. I was quite surprised, actually. Programs. Um, of course, there are. Um, it's more than one way of spelling programs. I used to have a heck of a time with an English teacher telling me that programs should have a double M in plural, but of course, both is acceptable in the Oxford Dictionary. So we'll change that. Now, Libra. This is um, the name of a word pro piece of word processing soft or software, a bit like Microsoft. But of course, um, the spelling checker doesn't know this. And I actually use LibreOffice most of the time. So I'm going to want to make sure that Libra is uh, a legitimate word. So I'm going to add that to the dictionary. Microsoft, well, there's nothing wrong with the spelling of it, except it wants a capital letter. So let's change that. And uh, Office Tools. We'll change that. OK, the grammar and spelling checker is complete. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, there was no grammar check in there, which is a bit silly. I might change that later. What we want to do now is to look at uh, the thesaurus. So we, over here on the left, we've got the thesaurus button. And if I will show you how we can use that. I was looking up here. We've got um, word processing has changed the process of compiling documents, letters. Whoops, missed the comma there. That grammar checker didn't do very well, did it? Okay, um, so let's grab the word. Oh, actually, you're going to have to grab the whole word. You just click in it and go up to Thessalus. Um, over on the right here, it gives us some alternatives. So if I'd used the word doc document a lot and I was looking for something else, it's a good way of uh, dealing with things like that. Okay, so uh, the Thessalus tells us a couple of things. A document could be a record or it could be text um, and it gives you alternatives to each so instead of using the word document I could use file essay paper a deed certificate you know, there's, there's a whole host of things here and similarly I could look at look at it as a to document as, as the verb and, and, and choose one of the these things here okay so it's a noun so we'll look at this and let's not change it not that it seems to be putting a problem. Okay, well that's the grammar and thesaurus. Uh, sorry, the spelling and thesaurus, and the grammar really didn't work. So I'm going to do another little video at some point on the grammar, and I'll try and figure out why it didn't pick up that comma. Okay, thanks for watching.